The Uniformation GK3 Pro. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. It's been a while since my last video for a variety of reasons that I won't bore you with, but I'm back today with a resin printer review. Full disclosure, Uniformation have paid me to review this one, but sponsorship or not, you know me. If it's good, I'll say so, and if it's rubbish, I'll probably say so twice. Uniformation consider themselves at the premier end of the domestic printer market, and as if to prove this, the whole chassis feels over-engineered, but in a good way. This thing is heavier than some FDMs I've owned, with a fair size build volume suitable for a mid-range printer. It has a flip-top lid, a built-in LED light, and plenty of internal space for easy access. It has a large, easy-change air filter at the rear, and it even has a resin tray cover to help keep the content dust-free. No one seems to do sundries like Uniformation these days. Yes, you get the usual gloves, filters, etc., but Uniformation also throw in tweezers, clippers, and my all-time favourite mixing tool. The menu is a flip-top design and actually hides the power switch. It's a funky feature that's no doubt helpful to some, but for me, it feels a little unnecessary. Fortunately, the USB port remains unhidden and easily accessible from the front. There's both Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity to allow access to firmware updates, remote slicing with certain slicers, and an app which personally I couldn't get to work on my old iPhone. But that's probably my fault for being a dinosaur. Whilst plastic, the resin tray seems robust and includes an easy pour spout. The tray is fitted with a CPFA liner, which is actually a new one to me, but is probably some rebranded PFA liner. The tray locks into place using two adjacent tabs, and the fitting feels very solid. The build plate is surprisingly thick and heavy with a sandblasted metal plate. It simply slid onto the Z-arm, then firmly held in place with a single lever for perfect fit. Now, if you've been following Uniformation for a while, you'll probably know that they've had a bit of a rail drama. On the GK3 Pro, Uniformation advertised their heavy-duty linear guides, which sounds impressive. But looking at the printer, I could only see one chunky EGH-20 rail sitting behind the lead ball screw. Now, to be fair, it's a good sized rail, and from what I've seen, the plate rides stable and smooth. Alignment felt solid with no obvious binding, but unless I'm missing something here, I'd rather their advertising said single heavy duty rail, as words can often be confusing. It comes with a 720p 2 megapixel camera, which if you can get the app to work, enables real-time monitoring. Compatible slicers like Cheetobox allow for the same thing via your trusty PC. I'd prefer to see a 1080p or better camera, but it does do the job. The GK3 Pro has a 9.6 inch 16K LCD high transparency mono screen. It's a 385 nanometer UV light source instead of the usual 405 nanometers, which we see on most other printers. In theory, this gives us cleaner curing with less bleed, which in short means better prints. This is particularly effective with transparent resins. The GK3 Pro is shipped from the factory fully leveled, and mine certainly was though there are video guides available for manual leveling if it's needed. Whichever angle you choose to have it, the user interface is clear, simple and responsive. Well, mostly, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get this slide control to actually move. This ties in nicely with the resin heating feature. Uniformation were, I believe, the first to give us the heating system on their GK2, and the 3 Pro is no different. 
preheating the resin to a more desirable level if required. Fortunately, 25 degrees Celsius is usually warm enough, and it was for me, but 30 degrees Celsius is available if you can get the slider to work. Uniformation do have their own slicer, but lychee fans like me will be pleased to note that it's fully compatible here. However, in this review, I use Cheetobox to take advantage of the built-in camera for time-lapse videos. Unfortunately, they all failed. So whether it's a slicer, printer or Wi-Fi problem, I can't be sure. Adding resin to the GK3 Pro can be done in the time-honored fashion, or you can opt to use the brand-specific bottle to benefit from auto-filling. This slot into the top and once the printer started, enable a smooth, steady and measured auto-fill. Provided you start with a full bottle, the printer will keep track of the bottle contents, but otherwise it's not clever enough to estimate the true volume. And there's no auto return system that I can see, so you'll need to empty the tray manually into the bottle, though not using the provided flimsy funnel, which is too small for standard paper filters. Luckily, if you want a more suitably sized funnel, I've provided one freely available from most download libraries. One thing I do love is this easy drip feature. The plate stands in some provided grooves and the resin droops neatly into the tray. It's a very nice touch. As stated, the GK3 Pro runs at 385 nanometers and most other printers are 405. Some premium resins work across a range, like Conjure Sculpt, which goes from 385 to 410 nanometers. Uniformation kindly sent me some of their W03 water washable resin, but it seems to be compatible with 405 printers. This meant I couldn't test their claim that 385 was better than 405, which is a shame to say the least. I began my test prints as always with the Amalabs Town test print, and as usual, dust plagued my every move, but the clarity of the prints was obvious, crisp and sharp. As you'd expect from a 16K unit, these prints were wonderfully detailed, even in these highly magnified images. So what do I think of the Uniformation GK3 Pro? Well, yes, this is a sponsored video, but Uniformation genuinely imposed no restrictions upon me, and personally, I wouldn't put a monetary value on my honesty. So what follows is strictly my own personal thoughts and observations. There's been some chatter in the past about Uniformation's linear rail setups, and I'm concerned in this instance that there's potential for confusion. I'd personally like to see more clarity in their marketing language. On my GK3 Pro, I can only see a single heavy-duty EGH20 rail, and it works very well. So just calling it that, instead of using plurals, would probably avoid any possible misunderstandings. The app remains a mystery to me, but a little internet digging seems to suggest it is live, though still very new. So hopefully that's something we'll see stabilize very soon. 385 nanometer resin benefits is difficult to prove without two identical printers supporting different light sources. And the fact that I haven't had access to 385 specific resin just makes this worse. But I am a little concerned that this may restrict folks from using any other resin than Uniformation which I don't think is a very smart marketing move, as monopolies tend to be unpopular. Furthermore, I would imagine that not all 405 resins will produce ideal results. So for this printer, do shop for your resin with all due care. For me, the tilting menu screen is a bit of a gimmick. It's not useless. If your printer lives under a shelf, you might appreciate it but I feel R&D money could have been better spent elsewhere, maybe on a higher spec camera. And now that I've ruined all chances of Uniformation ever sponsoring another one of my videos, 
let me tell you what I really think about this printer. I actually like it. It's very well built, has a great 16K screen, and produces the kind of quality prints that we are really looking for. The dripping system makes cleanup much easier, and the heating system continues to be a must in all climates that see temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius. The internet connectivity and the built-in camera make it really convenient to monitor print progress. And if you can't be bothered to pour your own resin, the autofill system seems to work a treat. Whether it's miniatures, models or jewellery, the GK3 Pro will cope with ease. Now as stated, Uniformation consider themselves at the premium end of the market and you'll likely pay a little bit more as a consequence. There's a link in the description that will take you directly to their store. And do check this link regularly as promo codes do turn up occasionally and we all like to save a few pennies where we can. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.